Shalom. First off, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai Bahashem, Racha Hakodash. Yahweh is the Heavenly Father's true name in ancient Hebrew. Yahweh Shai is the name of his only begotten Son, the Savior and Redeemer of the nation of Israel, starting with the elect. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Honor, salutations, and blessings to the men that are preaching the gospel of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai in all sincerity, diligence, and truth. And peace, grace, and blessings be upon the house of David, which is the elect men, men women, and children. <coughs> and, um, you know, this is going to just be uh, something I uh, have been uh, meditating on um, as of late. All right. Uh, knowing the time that we're in and, um, you know, about to we're about to uh, witness the revenge of um, Yahweh Shai, you know, upon his enemies. All right. Because as the scripture says. In the um, book of uh, was that I think it's in Psalms, Psalms the um, 110th chapter. Let me uh, pull that up. Psalms 110, verse um, one. It says, and "This is a Psalm of David." Okay, and we know that Yahweh, uh, through Yahweh Shai, has uh, risen up the uh, tabernacles of David. Okay, and um. The uh, tabernacle of David, when King David was on the scene, uh, what did he do? All right. Through war, he subdued all of his enemies around about him. You see, and, you know, through this spiritual war that we're in, because the first uh, or the yeah the first tabernacle, the tabernacle of David conquered their enemies through uh, physical war and bloodshed. But uh, we, as being the spiritual temple and the spiritual house, have overcome uh, uh, our enemies through the uh, blood of the lamb and through the word of our testimony, as it says in Revelation, the uh, 12th, uh, the 12th chapter. So um, Psalms 110 verse one, it says, the Lord, Yahweh, saith unto my Lord, which would be Adawanya. All right. Or yeah, Adawanya. Okay, let me just uh, get that real quick. Adawan, yeah, Adawan is Lord, and Yah at the end will make it mine. So when you read it, it says um, the Lord, which the the Lord is capitalized there, which would be Yahweh, said unto my Lord Adawanya, my Lord, sit down at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Okay, and this is a um, a prophecy that David was speaking in the spirit, speaking about Yahweh Shai after he rose, you know, uh, um, from the dead, after he came on the earth as the Messiah, as the son of God, and uh, be became the, um, the sacrificial lamb to offer up his uh, blood, okay, for the remission of sins of many, as he said, and, um, was uh, taken back and ascended back into the heavens and is sitting upon, you know, sitting on the right hand of the father, awaiting until all of all of the things that were written be fulfilled. All right. Concerning the end of this age. So Yahweh Shai has has, you know, been waiting to um, return back into the earth to make his enemies his footstool. Now, Yahweh Shai has many enemies, right? Uh, pursuant to Psalm uh, Luke 19, verse uh, 27, those my enemies that would not that I reign over them, bring them hither and slay them before me. However, when you read the scriptures and you, um, you know, are able to through the spirit <clears throat> dissect uh, uh, the generations and the reincarnations and understanding how Yahweh Shai was on the scene uh, before he came as the Messiah, right, as the king as the son of David, as King Solomon, and he also was um, uh, Adam, right? Let's get that in the book of Matthew, uh, the um, first chapter. It says, Matthew's one and one, the book of the generation of Yahweh Mashiach, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Now, we also know he was Isaac as well. So there it says he was the son of David. Which is which is why he says in Revelation, the 22nd chapter, I'm the root 
and the offspring of David, right? But here in the book of Luke, the uh, third chapter, it says, verse 38, which was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. So also we know that Yahweh Shai is the only begotten of the Most High. So he, when he was uh, put, you know, uh, um, in the earth, the first time as a man, it was what? Adam. Okay. Now, the reason why I said, I said that Yahweh Shai, you know, uh, uh, <laughs> is coming, you know, specifically, and not just only, but his, his the the his his head target outside of you know the the wicked of Israel, but the 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 main person that he's coming he's coming for is who Esau Edom, and I say that because from the beginning, right from the Genesis the third chapter. The reason why Adam, which we just read, was the son of God, which we know is Yahweh Shai. The reason why he was casted out of the Garden of Eden, casted out of paradise, and with being casted out of uh, the Garden of Eden, he also lost his immortality. He he lost the uh, right or the uh, the privilege to be um, immortal because before this, before uh, he got you know he he took heed to his wife eve who was beguiled by the serpent adam was immortal all right he was he was um able to eat from uh from the tree of life uh freely okay but it was because of the serpent now it says genesis third chapter verse one now the serpent was more subtle than all the beasts of the field which the lord god had made and he said unto the woman hath yeah, have God said that ye should not eat of every tree of the garden? And this woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. See? So before this, uh, Adam and uh, Eve, they weren't, they didn't, they weren't going to experience death. All right? They were given the wide gate, as it is written in Second Ezra, the seventh chapter. Uh, uh, the old, you know, the former or the old world. They were given the wide, the wide path to immortality. But because let's get that in the book of Wisdom of Solomon, the third chapter, uh, the second chapter, verse twenty-three. It says, "For God created man to be immortal." Now, who is that man that he created to be immortal? Adam, which is once again the son of God, which is who? Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai, or in his generation as Adam, was created to be immortal. It says, and made him an image of his own eternity. You see that? So, yeah, he was the image of Yahweh's uh, uh, eternity. But, verse 24, nevertheless, through the envy of the devil. Now, who is the devil? Go to Revelation, the 12th chapter. It says, verse 7, Salaki, verse 9, go to the point. It says, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the, called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out into the earth and his angels was cast out with him. So that old serpent, which is also called the devil, which is ultimately who? The one who comes after the working of Satan, the spiritual demon Satan, which is uh, Esau Edom. All right. In the in the in the, the vessel of Esau Edom is used by the spiritual demon Satan. As the scripture says, he is the children of, of wickedness. Also, the children of disobedience. So it was through uh, the devil, which the Lord, cre uh, the serpent, which the old serpent, which is the devil that the Lord created. Right. That was more subtle than any beast of the field that beguiled Eve. Which made ultimately uh, Adam lose immortality. 
Okay, so that was the first <laughs> that was the first uh, uh, strike that Yahweh experienced against Esau. That was a you know that was a when the according to the story that that what is written that was when this 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 battle or this uh, um, this nemesis <laughs> or this arch nemesis arose. All right. Um, Going back to Wisdom of Solomon, second cha chapter says, Nevertheless, through the envy of the devil came death into the world, and they that do hold of his side do find it. Right? Because as it says in second Ezra, the seventh chapter, again, that uh, through Adam's sin, we all, you know, we all die. Right? Although we did not all sin after the, um, after the um, similitude of, of uh, Adam, we all f suffer the same. Uh, we all suffer the same fate, which is what death entered into the world of the sons of God. I have said you are you are gods, and all of you are the children of the Most High, right? But that started from who? Adam, which is who? Yahweh, right? Adam being a son of God. So now, when you fast forward. <clears throat> Right. When you fast forward to when Yahweh came on the scene in his um, in his earthly glory, which was during the time of him being king over Israel, the last when when Israel had peace, you know, amongst all nations through the through the house of David, subduing all nations, Solomon was able to reign in a peaceful stead. Right, and he was the wisest and the richest, the most sought out, sought after king on all of the earth in history. See, Yahweh gave Yahweh Shai the the greatest kingdom that a man on the earth, that a, a man in the in the um, in the uh, chains of darkness could have. When you read it, it says that there was no throne that was ever made like the throne that uh, Solomon had. His house took fourteen years. He he got. Silver was accounted as worth 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 uh, nothing in his days. His cups and his utensils was of pure gold. He overlaid, you know, uh, uh, the pillars and 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 all of the, you know, uh, structures of his house with gold and um, other precious stones and trees, right? <clears throat> um, ivory, all these things. So Solomon had a, a kingdom that, you know, you couldn't even imagine how it looked on this side, which once again, Solomon, as um, the prophet Nathan surnamed him, Jedediah, uh, was Yahweh, because Jedediah, Jedediah means a uh, beloved of God, which is what Yahweh, Yahweh said when Yahweh got baptized and he read, and you know, when he was getting baptized by John. And there was a voice, right? John chapter three, verse 17, it says, and lo, from a uh, low voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased, right? Because it was during that time that Yahweh Shai came in uh, to do his will perfectly, to do the will of the father perfectly, right? Because as, as Solomon he um in his old age he went off from following the Lord. And who did Yahweh raise up first? <laughs> right? Who did Yahweh raise up first when Solomon went off? First Kings eleven verse fourteen. And the Lord stirred up an adversary unto Solomon, Hadad, the Edomite. He was the king's, he was of the king's seed in Edom. OK, so he raised up Hadad, which was an Edomite of the king's seed. I'm going to jump to verse. Um, where is it? Uh, verse 25 in first Kings 11th chapter, he says, and he was an adversary to Israel all the days of Solomon. This is speaking about another man by the name of. Rezon, all right, the son of Elada. Okay. Um, he said he was another adversary that the Lord raised up in the days of Solomon, 
beside the mischief that her dad did. Remember, her dad was an Edomite. Now, it was, it's interesting because it says that her dad did mischief. And when you look into, um, you know, what mischief, you know, really, you know, it, it is, it's, it's really, you know, something that's conniving. Right. It's an evil, con you know, uh, uh, d uh, says disagreeable, malignant, um, distressed. Right. Wickedness, wicked. The Hebrew word is a uh, rye, which is basically bad or evil. But her dad, he did mischief. <clears throat> and that's exactly what the serpent did. Right. Uh, being subtle. When you go into that word subtle, it means being crude. Are, uh, are not crude, shrewd, or cunning, cunning in, in, in an evil sense. And that's how Esau has always moved. That's how he moves. He doesn't move straightforward and come at and come at you straightforwardly. He does things conniving in, in, in a mischievous manner. Right? So here, Yah uh, Yahweh raised up an uh, Edomite first to be the adversary to Solomon. Now, when Yahweh Shai came on the scene, what who put Yahweh Shai to death? Ultimately, it was the Roman, the Roman Empire. John, uh, what is it? The nineteenth chapter. Let's see. John chapter nineteen, verse ten. It says, "Then Pilate answered, uh, said unto him, Speakest thou not unto me? Knowest that not I have power to crucify thee?" And have power to release thee. You see that? So he had power to actually release Yahweh Shai from being put to death, which was a man that committed no sin, which was a man that even uh, Pontius Pilate said that he found no fault in him. So Pilate seen, knew that he shouldn't have been put to death. But what did he, but he put him to death anyway. He, he wrote off, right? He, he, um, What's the word? He um, authorized. That's the word I'm looking for. He authorized a innocent man to be put to death. A man who committed no sin to be put to death. And remember, the wages of sin is death. Yahweh Shai didn't commit a sin in the flesh. So in a technical sense, Yahweh Shai should have never died. But we know that he had to die for the sins of, of, of Israel. Right. And ultimately... For the, you know, the sins that he committed in his past life and to become that sacrificial lamb to to get immortality. That's why the heavenly father had to raise him up because he had to give him a, an immortal body because he his body should have never died. So he gave him a spirit. He put his spirit into a body that would never experience death again. All right. That's why he said, uh, behold, in Revelation 4, uh, 11 and uh, of Revelation 1 and 18, behold, I am him that liveth and was dead and uh, uh, liveth forevermore. Right. But now that he is now that he is risen and he is on the right hand of the father, what is he waiting to do? He's waiting to get revenge. And who is he want revenge on from the man of sin, the son of perdition? The one that been a thorn in his on his side from the 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 beginning of the foundations of the earth, and that's why Yahweh Shai, when he comes back during this time, is going to be on and popping for you Edomites. He going he he's going to show he's going to release all of the wrath and the anger and the rage that he's been holding on and waiting. Got to remember Yahweh Shai is the greatest Jake. The greatest Israelite. He is the first Israelite created. <laughs> okay. The first son of God created in, in, in all of his majesty. And it was you devils. It was the spirit of Esau that has made him, that had that had put him to death as he was a pure, uh, innocent man that deceived his woman into thinking that something was better outside of the immortality that, they, uh, that, that he had. When he was on the scene as Solomon in a peaceful kingdom, the Lord raised up an Edomite to cause him mischief and adversary. So in the Lord and, and Yahweh Shai never got any revenge for none of these things. But it's now he's going to get that revenge, which is why it says in Isaiah 63rd chapter, 
Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? This that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel, and thy garments like him that treadeth the winepress? Why are your, your clothes so red as if you been treading in, <clears throat> in the grapes? The answer, I have trodden the winepress alone, and of the people there was none with me. For I will tread them in mine anger and trample them in my fury. Their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my raiments. Why? For the day of vengeance is in mine heart, and the year of my redeem is come. You see that? The day of vengeance. Vengeance belongeth unto me, saith the Lord, Yahweh through who? Yahweh Shai. That's why in Revelation 19 chapter says he is coming in the wrath of the almighty God. And he's coming during a time, as it says in Daniel, the second chapter, in the days of these kings, the, Lord, the, the God of the king, the, the God of uh, heaven shall raise up a, a, a kingdom. And who is and who is he going to give that kingdom to? Yahweh And Yahweh is coming in the time where Esau is at his highest level of wickedness. And on top of that, the blood that Yahweh shed, the one, the, the Lord willing that we are covered with, Esau is going to try to defile the bodies that the blood of Yahweh is covering by put by making it a, a mandatory way to live that you got to put that karagma inside. He's trying to defile the temple, the abomination of desolation all over again. But this time, Yahweh Shai is not going to allow it because this is the this is the actual spiritual temple that he's trying to defile. And all of that wrath and all of the 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 rage and all of the patience, right? That Yahweh Shai had to wait from the beginning to get upon you Edomites. It's about to happen very soon. It's about to happen very soon. <clears throat> and that's why he says that he's going to he's going to cry. Like a travailing woman. <coughs> He's going to roar like a lion. There's going to be a lot of bloodshed on you Edomites, man. Remember this day, the day of the Lord, this, this, this fire that is coming. Although many people are going to experience it, many other nations. But understand who is it actually prepared for? Who is this day the, the, the fire actually really prepared for? <coughs> Matthew chapter 25 Verse 41, then shall he say unto them on the left hand, depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. You see that? So that is what this fire is really prepared for. That is what the day, the, the, the vengeance, the fiery, the fiery uh, flame uh, uh, that Yahweh Shai is coming with is really prepared for. That's why it says in Isaiah 63rd chapter, who is this that coming from Edom? He's coming to visit you devils, man. And it's not going to be no nice talking diplomatic visit. He got he got a he got a lot of revenge that he is going to let loose on you. And then on top of that, on top of that, because he could do it all by himself. And that's why he said, I tried in the wine press alone. But then he going to let his brothers get down on you as well. And out of all of the nations that had a part of our downfall. Out of all the nations that has uh, spoiled us, you Edomites have spoiled us the worst. And the Lord is going to allow us to be made like him and give us the power like he has. Obviously not to his level, but he's going to change us into imm immortal beings as well with great power from above to get down on you Edomites as well. This is your, this is the judgment. This is why the scripture says that he hates Esau. Jacob have I loved and Esau have I hated. Because look what you've been doing from the beginning. Okay, so like I said, something I've been meditating on. Hey, your, your judgment, and that's why yeah, Yahweh Shai said it, man. It is finished. It was done. When he came back and he died uh, perfectly, came in the flesh and, and learned obedience through suffering. When he came and did that. And he, before he gave up the ghost that it is finished, he, oh, he meant that. 
it's finished. Now it's just, it's just on and popping from here. Now he's just waiting. And now is the time where the wait will be over. Okay, so, hey, man, we, we about to witness, we about to witness a, a, a beautiful, beautiful thing that's about to uh, happen. I don't even know what to put into word, but the day of the Lord upon his adversaries, upon his enemies, upon you Edomites in your kingdom. Oh, yes, yeah, it's, it's over for you. So, you know, with that, call Loya Hawabashim, Yahushai Bashim, Rakakwadash, Shalom.